All right. Um, so welcome. Yeah, I'm still setting up here, um, but um, our goal is to, um, yeah, and, and sorry about having to kind of reschedule. This is a one-time thing, so uh, we'll be back to 11 um, on our Wednesday session. So, um, our goal here is to go over to um, assignment five, um, but as usual, you know, it, it'd be nice if these are a little bit more driven by um, uh, questions uh, from students. So, so I hope that um, at this point you've kind of gotten the flow of stuff. Um, you know, and it would be good to, to have actually started on the assignment before now, so that you have kind of questions ready. Um, so, so yeah, if anybody does have some questions, go ahead and start asking them. I need to get um, I need to get my my dev box up here. Well, I don't have that quite running yet. Um, here. I guess I can, I mean, at this point, I'm, I'm sure, I don't know if I have to remind people about starting up their dev box. Let me get to my directory. Get my dev box going here. Everybody can hear me, right? Um, my audio's on here. Check that out, yeah. All right. So dead box coming up. Um, yeah, I don't know if I had any other assignment. I, I think I've gotten everything back mostly. I mean, except for assignments, um, except for the quizzes. But yeah, those aren't due today for the for this unit. Uh, the tests did get get back. The midterm tests, um, of course. I mean, you know, I know people uh, want some things back for previous assignments. Um, that um, um, you know, I, I won't go back for to, to to look at stuff that was submitted after I finished an assignment. Uh, at least not until more near the end of the course, unless I really have some time. But um, I don't. I have some time here. Um, so, up, we're up. so um, go ahead and get my dev box up. Oh, I should probably go and get GitHub up as well so I can look at the assignment. Oh, I haven't even accepted the assignment yet. So, um, so yeah, so your GitHub account, I mean, if you go to the COSC, I and mean, you should see all your repositories now. Um, oh, I need to. Um, um, we need to get the URL for the assignment um, invitation. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think task four, somebody asked a question. Uh, uh, the question is, in case people watch this later, can't see the chat. Um, it's about task four. Task four is a little bit different. Task one, two, and three will be similar, you know, that you should be familiar with by now. In task four, I'm asking you to actually create a new branch. So a little bit learn to learn about Git, although some people um, kind of um, um, before they figured stuff out, we're, we're doing stuff, creating branches and things. Um, so we're going to create a branch on a task four um, so that we can uh, implement, uh, re-implement the work um, uh, so to templatize the class here. And I did want to go through that um, a little bit. Um, OK, so I've got the assignment finally. The, my repository copied on GitHub for me. Um, let's go and clone it then. Let me do my assignment as usual. Um, and um, 
figure here. It builds and runs. I'll clean it with all. And our tests. Okay. So, yeah, for this one, um, there is um, two test cases kind of uncommented out. Uh, testing the basic list class um, that I can maybe talk a little bit briefly about. You ought to be kind of familiar with the list class now. Uh, we've been kind of using it and reusing it in, in, in a few assignments. So your first one, though, is going to be kind of the third one down here. Um, so we built and run, ran. I'll just create my issue one here. So, um, that's one. Um, oh, so, um, let, let me, let me, let, let's look through the list class a little bit, uh, maybe for five or 10 minutes here, um, uh, talk about it because um, it, we had already been using operating overloading, which was one of the two main um, topics for this um, unit. Right. So, uh, but um, so give this give us a chance to maybe um, discuss those again. But now that you should, uh, maybe not yet. But but now that you should be going over the materials about operator overloading here. So uh, here's my header file, um, and uh, let's open up the implementation file as well. This is, this is a list class like we've been using for a couple of our assignments. Um, um, we went back to um, in some assignments, sometimes we've had a list of um, strings um, and then other times we've used a list of integers. Um, so our, your initial class this time, this class this time uh, will maintain just a list of integer values um, here. So, so there's, a, there's an array of integers that gets dynamically allocated and dynamically managed called values. Um, and there's a couple of overloaded operators. Um, I think we've had all of these before, um, and, but we've only briefly talked about them. But um, there's a indexing operator, which you did have to use, for example, for the searching and sorting, uh, you used the indexing operator. And the operator, the overloaded equals operator, which you have used as well, right? So, so as, as I described in the, the description for the assignment, um, the overloaded equals operator allows you to compare two lists. And if they're equal, it should return true. And if they're not equal, it should return false, right? Um, so again, after going over the materials, you ought to better understand how these work, right? So um, the overloaded equals operator um, takes another list um, as its parameter, so a constant reference. It's a constant member function itself because it doesn't make any change to the list. It just returns um, a Boolean result of true or false. The, the, the two lists are equal or they're not equal. Um, let's look at the implementation of that a little bit more closely here. So, um, so here's the, um, here's the overloaded um, Boolean equality operator, right? Equal equals does a Boolean um, test uh, whether two things are equal or not. So the implementation is basically two lists are equal if every value in this list is equal to every value in um, the right hand side. Okay, so um, here I, I sometimes, as, as a style thing, I, I've been telling people don't use abbreviations, but here I'm using abbreviation. Uh, although again, this is because of a pretty common sort of abbreviation for operator overloaded overloaded functions. So left hand side, right hand side um, instance. 
uh, here. So here, like, like if we look at the tests, let's go ahead and, um, um, I, yeah, I might not have a test where we're um, using that, but, but um, if we look at the, the assignment description here, if we have two lists, L2 and L3, and if we do equal equals, um, so everybody should realize after doing our materials today that um, Um, oh, yeah, so here's some examples where we're testing it here down at the bottom of, of this first uh, test case. So where we're testing the overloaded quality operator, right? So, so this is just equivalent to doing something like this. In fact, I'll go ahead and add this in and test it out. All right, but notice, so what I've done here is, is I've explicitly called. So, so this is um, really just a member function, operator equal equal, but with a special name, okay? The special name uh, is used syntactically by C++ to, in order to realize that, that you're overloading an operator. So I can use it uh, like I would use equal equals for built-in types or for standard scalar types like integers and floats and, and things like that, right? Um, but so so these are equivalent. So so if if the operating or sorry if the C plus plus compiler sees this where there's a list type on the left hand side of the operator and a list type on the right hand side of the operator. Um, it will kind of convert it when it compiles into this into a invocation of the operator equal equal member function for L6, the, the left-hand side instance, passing in L7 um, as the parameter, the right-hand side object, okay? So that, that's kind of all this going on behind the scenes by the C++ compiler for this kind of operator overload, And you can do these either way, um, you know, so, I mean, but if you're overloading the operator using that special um, member function name, it means usually that, that I want to write code using the equal equal syntactically um, as if I was using two types, two built-in types, integers or Booleans or things like that, right? So you normally wouldn't invoke your overloaded operator member function like this, except to illustrate that, that you can, like I'm doing it. So if I add that in, and if I rebuild, hopefully it'll build, um, and, um, and it should run and, and go ahead and pass, right? So yeah, I mean, it's still passing even though, so I've now got one more 67 instead of 66 assertions, uh, but, but that's basically the same assertion as it was doing there, right? Um, so anyway, that, that was the overloaded operator equals. Um, you know, likewise, you know, we, we've got the operator. Um, this is the indexing operator, um, which we test some examples of that here. Um, and uh, we, we used this uh, previously in, in um, you use this for like the sorting uh, and searching um, assignment, right? So uh, we can use that not only to read values out. Um, so I assume that, that we read values out of our lists in our tests up here. So you know, let's, let's go back up here. So. If we have list two, which has these values, we can use the indexing operator. So, so list two isn't a regular, just plain array, C array. It's, it's our list type, but I can use it like it's an array, say, give me index zero. And it will read and return the value at index zero. And then I can compare and see if that's equal to one, which it should be, right? Which is why the, the test should be possible. And we do that simply by accessing the here values, you know, again, values is um, private array, right? So, so it's, it's a pointer to a block of memory. 
So, so it's essentially an array of integers and then I can access the integer. But before we access that, we do some error checking, some, some bounds checking. We, we make certain we, we know what the size of the array is. So if, if you ask to, um, um, there should have been some checks in here. Um, so, so if you ask to index uh, value five for L2, so, so L2 is size five, but that means the valid indexes are from zero to four, right? So if you ask to index to get the value at five, it, it throws um, an exception instead. Or if you ask to index a negative index, it throws an exception. Right? Um, and the only other overloaded operator you're given is the output streaming operator, right? Um, so this works a little bit differently than, um, than the other two operators that I showed you or, or that we gave you here. This is a friend function because um, um, here, the way that we normally use the output stream operator, and I believe I talked about this in our videos about overloading today, a little bit at least. Um, certainly it's in your textbook materials about operator overloading and the, the, the output stream um, operator here. Um, but, but yeah, so, so if you want to output a list to a, um, um, like a, a stream, like a C out, the, the standard output stream, the output stream would be on the left-hand side and the list would be on the right-hand side, right? But you can't, I mean, C out is, is, a, is, a, is an, an object or a class that's provided by C++. So you can't add member functions to like a, a C out class. Um, it, it, it's really an instance of what's the, as a, of a output stream class. If, if you look in the internals, C++, right? So C++ gives other ways of, of adding functionality. So overloading operators in this case um, to classes that are implemented as part of like the, the C++ standard libraries, right? So in this case, I need I need an output stream on the left hand side, and on the right hand side, I need one of my lists if if I want to implement something so I can have a list display you know sent to it um, my my output stream here, right? Okay. Um, and that's what we're doing here uh, for this, right? So since since I have to have it's an O stream object, right? So we expect we overload the operator left arrow left arrow. Um, for this this um, um, streaming output operator, right? So basically, this takes you can think of this as just a regular function. It's, it's a friend of our list class. It expects two parameters. Um, so it, it expects an O stream, a reference to an O stream. Notice this isn't a constant reference because we're going to be modifying this O stream. So we're going to be sending stuff into this output stream. Um, and, it, and it expects a constant list reference as the right-hand side object, right? Which is our list that, that we want to stream into the output stream. And it returns the, the modified um, reference to the O stream. So, so you have to return the output stream after you stream in whatever you want to stream into it. Um, so in this case, we want to stream into it some representation of our list, right? And the normal way I like to do that, and then I've been having you guys see how to do that, is to actually have just a string method um, or like a, a two string method um, that does the actual work that, that just returns a string representation. And then we can stream that into our output stream um, here. Um, that, that's the general thing you're going to be doing for the task one, two, and three. We're going to first implement like a regular member um, function, member method, um, and then you're going to just call that member method like we do here for the friend output stream, um, for the overloaded operators that you're implementing um, in your um, assignment here. So yeah, the, 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 the regular member method called str or string, um, basically outputs all of the values in the list um, into a string into a string stream and then we convert that string stream into a regular um, a regular string to be returned by the by the string method here 
All right. Um, so that was, that was a pretty large preamble, but 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 that because if you understand that, that's exactly what you're doing for task one, two, and three. All right. Are there any quick questions about that before I go on to task one here? So task one, you actually have to implement two member functions, but for for all for all three of these first tasks, you have to implement two member functions. Uh, but I think that the second one is relatively easy it's, uh, for all these. It's, you're just going to be invoking the um, a member function in the overloaded um, output, um, in the overloaded um, um, operator function here. So. Um, Okay, so so the, the the you know as usual, you ought to start by um, uncommenting the um, tests that you need to implement, and maybe looking at them and understanding them. So at this point, I mean, um, hopefully you're familiar enough with these that um, they're not just complete um, mysteries, uh, because because these should also help you a lot. On, on figuring out, for example, what the signature is of the function you need to implement um, and, um, and, and how they're supposed to work. So, so a pen, um, oh, and all of, for all of these first three tasks, there, there, there's gonna be two test cases. The one where we first test just the, the, the regular member function, right? And then after that, there's a second one uh, for task one, but where we test it, where you've overloaded the, um, the, um, the the operator um, uh, that you're supposed to implement, right? So anyway, passed it. Um, so anyway, um, so for append, um, you know, if you have an initially empty list and you append the five, um, you should expect now that the size of the list is one. Um, and that the value at index zero is a five, and then if you get the string, you know, right. So, so all, all the pin has to do is um, add the value um, to your list, okay? Um, but um, um, and, but uh, for reasons that, that, that'll be clear here in a second, you, you need to return uh, a reference back to the list, right? So, so you can do that simply just by returning pointer to this. But, but that means that you have to return um, a list reference, okay? So, so we've, we've done that before um, for like the, the large integer type, but in this case, you're gonna be returning a reference to the list itself. And, and even more specifically, you're returning the reference to this list item that, that you call the append function on, right? Um, and what needs to be passed in is just an integer, okay? So um, our, um, in this case, our, our list, um, the, the append just, just takes, we're, we're, we're keeping a list of integers, so you just pass in one integer, right? Um, and again, since this is a simple integer, um, it doesn't have to be constant or a reference or anything like that, so it's just an integer. And, and the append isn't a constant function because you are actually modifying list one as a result of calling this, right? So it's neither a constant function and there's nothing really fancy about um, value that we're passing here. So the, 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 the parameter that we're passing here. So. Um, all right, and as is described here, um, Basically, uh, we are doing dynamic memory management of the list here. So for um, a list that uses the default constructor, I'm sorry, like we did um, uh, here, right? It's gonna initially create the list uh, as being empty of size zero, right? So um, if you look at the, the, the default constructor, it initializes it with, with the values being null. Um, and with the size being zero and the allocation size being zero, okay? Now, um, 
as is described here, though, um, I kind of mostly handle the memory management for you. The, the only thing you have to do is you have to just reuse the um, um, row list of, if needed, right? So basically, anything that might cause the list to need to, need to be grown or, or um, expanded in size, um, um, you first call grow list if needed, right? Let's look and see what the grow list if needed does. Right. So um, so I give you that. If you call that, basically, you know, it does. It 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 just doesn't do anything if there's currently enough memory, right? So so if, if as long as size isn't equal to allocation size, that means there's at least one more space um, in the values array that 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 we could use to put in another value. So the, the grow list if needed only assumes that only one thing needs to be added at a time to the list here, okay? Um, um, but, but if that's not true, basically it, it uh, as it's discussed on there, it basically doubles the size. If the, the list is initially zero, um, it creates a list of size 10, the initial, allocation size or whatever initial allocation size um, is defined as. So yeah, 10 in our header file. Um, oops. Um, but um, if the, the, the list is not zero, it's just it's gonna double, right? So I, I discussed that a little bit, but um, and then you, you've had to do similar things like this before. Um, we just do this for you. So if it does have to, to make the, the, the list bigger, um, it allocates a new a block of memory to hold the new values for the new allocation size. It copies all the values from the old one into the new one. Um, it deletes that old memory and repoints the new memory, the, 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 the values to that new block of memory that we just dynamically allocated, right? The, the reason in a nutshell for doubling the size is that that gives a good sort of trade-off between performance um, and um, not having a lot of wasted space, right? So if, if we initially, if two is too, if 10 is too small, it doubles it to 20. If 20 then is too small, it doubles it to 40. So pretty quickly, if you keep doubling things like that, you'll end up with, with a lot of memory. Um, but you won't have to do too many doublings before you reach that point. So it is, it is inefficient to have to allocate a new block of memory and copy everything over. So you kind of want to avoid doing that a lot. Um, anyway, um, and then once you do that, um, um, uh, once you get the um, append working, right? And this is relatively simple, um, although um, I don't remember if I tested it. Yeah, I did test it here. So. But the thing is, the other thing is you need to make certain that you're correctly returning the, the reference. So if you return L1, so, so the reason why you do that is because, for example, I could do something like this. This looks kind of funny, but if I do like a pen 17 to L1, this returns the L1 again. Um, so since this returns L1, then I could call again, append again on what was returned from that and then pen another value, right? So again, you wouldn't normally do this for like a regular member function, but by defining that like that, that allows us to do, we look at the second test case for task one. That allows us to do uh, this. So now when you overload the to right arrow oper operand for the list. So list on the left-hand side and integers on the right-hand side, it'll do this one first. So that it'll append five onto your list. It'll return your list again, if, if you're doing everything correctly. Um, and then for that new list, or, or actually for this uh, still um, that you return, since you just returned this, the reference to this, um, it'll then append seven. So the result is we append five, then append seven, append nine, and so on. Right. Um, so to, to do the second part of task one, you basically have to implement 
you know, I have to define an operator, right arrow, right arrow, right? I'm gonna call that my append operation for list here. And basically all it needs to do is call append and return whatever append returns, right? So, so just return um, the result of calling append, okay? And it needs to have basically the same signature as append. It takes an integer as input parameter and it returns a reference to a list. Okay, so yeah, I need to move on. Um, I'm, I'm probably gonna just, um, um, is any, any questions about task one there? Anybody wants to ask? I'm gonna go kind of quickly through task two and three here probably so I can talk about task four. So prepend um, is pretty similar. If you get append, I think with, with, with very few changes, you should be able to do prepend. So for again, so for um, the prepend for task two. Um, again, you first should start off, and, and, and also I would recommend, I mean, still, even though the, the overloaded operator should be relatively simple, but it would be good to do a commit at the halfway point for each of these tasks. So, so, so get it to, to do a commit when you um, get your preprint member function in there um, um, and these tasks um, working, and then don't uncomment the, the second task for task one or the second test case for task two until you get all these tasks working. Um, and then, you know, prepend, you know, so once I have a list with just the, the item five on it, as you can imagine, prepend should put it at the beginning of the list instead of the end of the list, okay? So um, the, the, the problem with this is that um, you do need to shift values. So it is, it is more complicated. So, so I'll take back a little bit of what I said, okay? So, so you're gonna have to put a loop in here to shift all your values up by one, making certain that you call the grow list if needed first, because, because you know, in the worst case, you, your current block of memory might be full. So you have to grow the list if the memory is full. But once you've done that, you should be able to shift the values up by one. Um, and then once you do that, you can prepin the value that you're asked to by putting that at index zero. That's what prepin is. And then again, it should return the, the, the same idea. It should return a reference to this item to itself um, so that you can then, um, for the second part of task two, overload the two. So again, notice here, so how does, how does it know that we're calling, instead of calling the streaming operator, we're calling, we're, we're overloading the two left arrows to mean prepin um, for our assignment here. And it knows that again because it, it 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 this is overloading, right? We're overloading this the, the two left arrows, which is normally overloaded to be streaming to like an output stream. But here we're doing two left over left arrows to a list. L1 is a list type. So in that case, it knows that you want to call your overloaded operator or your prepin member function because you implement that as a member function of, of list type that takes an integer as the parameter, right? So, so it knows how to do the right thing for this overloaded two arrows to mean prepin. And again, if, if you return the right thing correctly as is described, then you can do stuff like this, stream, you know, well, pre-pinned in multiple things at a time to our list one. So in this case though, since we're pre-pending five, five L1 is empty. So, so five will end up at the end of the list followed by seven and so on with 15 at, at, is the last thing that gets pre-pended to the beginning of the list. All right, quick questions on that. Concatenate um, works like this. 
Um, we, we've done something similar. Oh, well, um, no, we haven't. Um, although now that you know about operator overloading or learning about it, we could have added this method, uh, an overloaded plus operator for the uh, large integer assignment, assignment two, I believe, right? Because the, you could have added the overloaded operator uh, plus operator to just call the add method uh, because our add method was returning a new large integer, right? And that, that was kind of the purpose of the reason why the add was implemented the way it was. Um, uh, there's a question about prepend before I move on. So the prepend is adding integer to the beginning of the index of list. Yeah, it's prepend, the, the item that you prepend should always end up at index zero of the list immediately after you return back from the prepend. Okay, did I answer the question? Um, so here for the concatenate, um, it should be taking two lists. Um, I'm sorry. Well, you know, again, though, we're implementing it as, you know, it takes, there, there's two lists, but list one will be the left-hand side. So we're going to call the operator plus or the, the concatenate, we're going to call the concatenate method on list one. Uh, and, and then L2, list two gets passed in as a parameter. Um, here, you know, list two should be defined, should be, uh, the parameter should be as a constant reference parameter. Um, so, you know, I described that here, but, but, but L2 should be constant because we're not going to modify L2 as a result of doing this concatenate operation. Um, and it should be passed in by reference just for efficiency sake, since L2 in, is, is a list, right? And L1 should not be modified as a result of calling concatenate. So L1, so, so the concatenate operation and the operator plus uh, member functions should both be constant member functions because L, neither L1 nor L2 are changed um, as a result of doing this concatenate operation. Um, and again, kind of like we did for the add method um, for the large integer, you need to dynamically create a new list. Um, so, so the algorithm is described here. So, so you need to start by al dynamically allocating a new array of integers that's big enough to hold all the values of L1 and L2. So, so you first find out the size of L1, the size of L2, add that together, dynamically allocate a, a new array then copy all the values from L1 into that new array, regular, just regular array of integers, and then also copy all the values of L2 to the end of that, right? To, to the indexes after the values that we copied from L1 in there. Um, and then dynamically create a new list of values, okay? So again, I provided the, um, there's an overloaded, or sorry, there, there's a constructor that takes a regular array of values, you can use that to, to dynamically create a new list given an array of integer values, right? So you use that to dynamically create a list of values. Once you've dynamically created that list of values, again, when I say dynamic, that means you have to call new on this, and this will return a pointer to that new list that was created, right? Once you've dynamically counted that, you can delete the, the array of values that you dynamically allocated to create this concatenated list. And then you should return that new list, right? And, and by returning that new list, that guarantees that you don't modify anything in L1 and L2. You create the new list and you're returning that new list as the result of concatenating list one and list two there, all right? Um, oh, and, and yeah, I, I said this, but again, you had to do something similar to this for like the, um, the uh, large integer class already and maybe in the previous assignment too, um, or um, um, yeah, anyway. Um, so, but, but I give you kind of some of, of, of what you need to be doing for what's described in the algorithm there. Um, and then again, you know, you have to do the operator plus, um, but um, um, it should just directly call the concatenate member function. Okay, so all these tests are really just copies 
Uh, so, so the second version of the test is really just a copy of the first one, but where we replace all the explicit calls to the member function with um, a call to the overloaded operator. Um, So yeah, anyway, but yeah, if you do that right, you should be able to call plus to concatenate two lists, get a resulting list, and, and it will be the same as calling the concatenate member function directly. So you get the same result of concatenating those two lists. All right. Um, so yeah, quick questions on that, because yeah, I did want to talk about task four here a little bit for 15 minutes or so if we can. So um, So I'm, I'm going to try and if I have time. Well, I don't have a class after this one, so if we go a little bit over, that's fine here. Um, I'm going to try and show you the, the the steps for task four here. Okay, so so the 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 issue here, the problem is, is once you finish um, the first three tasks, the, the, those six member functions um, that you're overloading the operators for, um, you've got a nice class, a nice list class with some nice. Um, um, operations, but it only works on integers, right? So, so it's hard-coded to only be able to, to, to do lists of integer values and to um, append or prepend onto lists of integer values or to concatenate list of integer values or to check if two lists of integer values is equal, right? You're out of luck if I want to, if I have an application where I need to do lists of strings or list of floats, right? I mean, without um, templates that you're also learning about in this unit, basically you, you have to copy all of the, the code for the list.cpp and the list.hpp, give it a new name like list string or, or string list or something like that, string list.hpp and string list.cpp. Um, and then that code is pretty much a duplicate. You just have to find all the places where, um, um, you know, so for one thing, if I want a list of strings, I no longer have an array of ints. I have an array of strings um, that I'm keeping here. Um, and for my prepend and append method, I'm not passing in an integer that I want to prepend or append to the function. I'm passing in a string. Right. Um, and so on. So that's a big, I've, so I've, I've given comments to people that the don't repeat yourself principle. It's a something that um, if you haven't heard of yet, you should go Google it. It's called the dry pimp, DRY dry pimp principle. That's a big rep repetition of code. I mean, that those two things of code are almost identical except changing int to string in certain particular places. And that's what templates and lots of li uh, Lisp, or sorry, uh, um, lots of languages uh, like Java um, and others have similar concepts to this, right? Um, th this idea of a template, you would really like to avoid that. You'd really like to, to create a generic container that can contain lists of string or lists of floats, or lists of doubles uh, without having to have copies, basically just repetitions of those code with just small changes for each of those, right? And this is something that can't easily be fixed by inheritance. So, so again, if, if you've tried to fix this by inheritance, have a base class and then have, have drive classes uh, like my string list and my int list and my float list, um, they don't work very well um, to use regular inheritance, inheritance to do this, okay? So, um, So first of all, um, you should go ahead and check out the commit um, all the way back before your first commit, okay? So you, so you do need to do this on command line. Um, it seems like you should be able to do this from Visual Studio Code, but it doesn't seem to be working, right? So if, if you go to the source control, um, there is an option like um, um, uh, 
check out um, and um, Um, and it looks like you ought to be able to enter in like a particular uh, branch you want to check out too. I'm not certain why that doesn't work yet. I haven't had a chance to, to figure that out. Um, so, anyway, but, but the first thing you need to do though, in order to find out this number, these, these you, you may or may not have noticed so far, these are um, every commit that you do gets one of these hashes. And for various reasons, Git doesn't use like a sequential number, like, like commit one, commit two, commit three, right? This is the, the, the SHA. SHA hash, or it's actually the first few digits of the, the hash that identifies the SHA, right? So to find that, um, I mean, one easy way, if, if you go to your repository um, and look here, you'll see these, right? Um, and the one I'm talking about is this one, basically. So, so after this one that was done for you, when you do your first commit for task one, you'll have a new SHA hash, right? Um, for me, it's 3EB8FDF. Oh, actually, for everybody, I guess it's going to be the same one because um, you're going to be doing a copy of this. So, so yeah, 3EB8. Um, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I may be wrong. So, so you might have a different hash number on that there. Um, so you can do this from the command line as well. Um, let's see if I can find a good the git log command will list these. Um, so that is for, for those first six characters um, um, of your hash, um, like so you normally use like the first uh, eight characters um, um, to identify. Um, that's kind of a shorthand. So, so normally those, those are probably going to be unique unless you get very unlucky. So, um, so like I like I said, if you do this though, um, this is actually going to check. I was actually going to check out that version before you start doing all your commits. So it's going to be like you go back in time. Um, and you'll have your repository back before you made changes. So, so I can do that. I won't do anything for me because I haven't committed anything to this repository yet. So I can do the, the git check out. Yeah, yeah. So when you do that, um, if you look at your code, it'll look like um, all your work has gone. Right, but you can always do a git checkout, and again, you might have to do it from from the command line right here. But uh, if you want, if you're going to go back to see the code that you that you've committed, you can always do like the git checkout um, and, and find the hash of the, the one that um, like your most recent commit, um, and check that out. Or there's a special one, so you can always say like um, git checkout head, I believe, and that that will take you um, to your most recent commit. Um, anyway, so we do that because we're basically going to redo the work that you just did for tasks one through four, but we're going to redo them while we're um, also templatizing the class. Okay, so this is the way that I normally templatize things. Is I first get a version working for a concrete, basic type like integer, and then I just go go through um, and and make the changes one by one for the for the different things um, uh, like different member functions and stuff like that um, uh, but templatizing them so um, So the other thing that I, I, I do want you guys to work on a different branch from the feedback branch um, uh, in this case here. Um, and, and we're gonna be creating the, um, the, this branch called template um, on this step here. Um, and it's gonna be branched off, again, it's gonna be branched off before you do any work. So it's gonna look as if um, you're redoing your work um, 
um, that you just did for tasks one through three, uh, but from a clean, um, from, from this clean point before you started doing any of your work. So, um, um, so this is doing a get switch. And if you give a name, we'll actually create a new branch for you called template and will allow you to do the, the things as I'm describing here, right? Um, so when you do that, Um, you'll see, like, if you do a get branch, you'll see that um, I'm, I'm not on my main branch. So you've been doing all, if, if you've been doing the work to where you're supposed to, you've actually been always committing to the main branch, right? So now you're going to be committing some stuff to a, a different branch, the template branch, okay? Oh, and notice also that, um, um, you know, when you do that, I mean, you know, Visual Studio Code does track stuff that you do even from the command line. So, um, it, um, oops, it, um, um, sees that we're on the template branch as well there. Okay. Um, so now any changes that you make um, um, are gonna be against this new branch here, against the template branch, all right? Um, okay, so um, I, I give you some other code with some additional tests and things like that. So let me show you doing that, all right? So um, so there's a subdirectory um, that should already be available for you called template in your project. The case, Contains some files called uh, test in template .cpp, test string template .cpp. Um, So copy these to your source subdirectory. Okay. So again, if you look in your files um, here on your browser, there um, should be a um, um, subdirectory a subdirectory called test. Let me open up the source and the include here. Um, called test. Um, so you want to get these two tests here. They, these contain um, additional, uh, these, these are a new set of unit tests that are testing all the same things, but we'll test the list using ints, and we'll also test the list, the list using strings, right? So I think, I think you can just drag and drop these in the Visual Studio Code. So, so if I highlight those, I did highlight, and then I did like a control click to highlight the other one, or I can do them one by one. So you should be able to like drag these into your um, source. Um, um, I don't know if there's a way to copy of them. I guess it, it, it'll, if, if you move them, it'll show them as being deleted from the template directory in your revision control um, and, and moved or renamed to source. Um, probably okay to move them. Um, I'm gonna do, I think if you do like a, a shift click or maybe control click, Or if I do like maybe control C, copy, control V, there, that's one way. You can, you can, you can highlight the things you want to copy and do a control C and then go to the directory you want to do there and do a control V and paste. That's probably the safest uh, to, to make copies of those um, things in there. So. Um, so anyway, you want to get those um, over to your source directory, the, the test for the end template. Um, so you want to copy over the make file um, as well. So you want to copy this over. Um, so this, the, the, the reason why the make file is different is because we changed the name of the test file. So we have to build those instead of the old one called test list. So we want to we want to build the, the, the test int template and the test string template um, files when we're doing our test. So again, I'm going to select that and do a control C to copy it. Uh, and then I can go V um, to, to check over my make file. So you'll notice now um, um, that we've now got um, two things untracked because we haven't added these. These are new files that we haven't added to our source directory. 
and the make file um, is, um, um, is it untracked. So um, anyway, so, so it should be modified. So. Closed all those off before. So, um, anyway, yeah, I mean, if you look at it, you'll see it's, it's just there should have only been a few modifications. Um, so, um, basically, to, uh, to be compiling in those two uh, new test files. Um, anyway. So besides that, in the make file, um, I actually got you started on the templatization. So you want to also copy in the given list.cpp to the source file, um, and the list.hpp should go to the include um, subdirectory. Okay, so, so those need to be copied to the correct locations. Um, so in template, we got list.hpp. Um, so that should go into the include subdirectory. Hmm. When I when I did a paste over the name of the file, it gave it, 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 um, it, it gave a, a new name there. So you want to make certain that you are getting the the, the copy of this overriding so so you, i mean if you have to you can always just delete the file out of there so um i guess if you paste it when you have the whole subdirectory huh, i didn't do that before i did the make file i don't know if i did something wrong um so yeah in this case i really want this copy to be my new list of so i'm going to delete that um and uh if you highlight something and hit f2 you can rename it there we go so you'll know you have the right one if you open it up. Um, if you look, you know. So after you after you look at the materials for uh, about templates, um, you'll see that we've begun the process of making this a template class. And so basically, I templatized all the stuff that I gave you at the start of the assignment. I just haven't templatized the stuff you added. Um, oh, actually, I guess I didn't templatize everything because I didn't. I also didn't templatize like the overloaded operator equal equal and some other things. You know? Um, so just some things, um, but you know, in particular, um, templatize the, the the type of the container to be just a generic T type, um, and then the constructor um, these these constructors that we're expecting an array now expects an array of, of T's or, or a list of that's holding type T's. So. Um, all right, so I got that. You know, let's copy over the um, copy over the the implementation file as well. Um, so let's look at that real quickly. All right, so. Um, Here, you know, notice basically this is what you're going to have to be doing to the functions you wrote before, kind of, as, as a first step. So, to make them templates, you know, you have to put this little template class T before each member function um, uh, implementation, bef before the prototype or the signature for each member function. Um, and then you have to change the namespace. So, so, now the namespace is not just a list, it's a list of T, list of type T, colon, colon. Right. So no, you don't. You don't change the name of the constructor. You only change the the, the name of the, the the part before the colon colon. To make these all um, members of of a list a container of type T. Right. Um, and um, if I'm right, once you do all those, you know, I, I kind of describing all this stuff that we're going through, but, but again, it should compile and run if you do those steps correctly. Um, 
So let's try that out. So um, if I do, so it'd be a good idea to do a clean build on this one. So if I do a, a clean normal build um, and um, it should build, so um, it didn't. So, um, um, so yeah, I did mess up copying my make file over there somehow. Um, because it was still trying to, to compile the test list.cpp for some reason. I'm gonna revert that. So whatever it is, so revert's kind of a nice thing. And if you ever mess something up, you can always go back to what it was. Um, all right, so that removed it out of my repository completely there. Um, so, um, must have pasted it at the wrong location or something like that. So if I select that again, control C. Control. Oh, I know what I did wrong. Yeah, it, yeah, it didn't go in the source. So yeah, no wonder, dummy. So um, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you need to uh, modify uh, this make file. Um, that's why it's, so sorry about that, it's misleading. So, so the, the, the make file um, in template needs to replace your make file um, for your project, which is actually in the, the root of your project there. Um, so yeah, this make file, uh, yeah, I hadn't modified yet. Um, I'm sorry about that. And, and I know that was confusing, that was confusing me. So uh, I'm gonna delete that, so let's delete that. And let's play that again, I'm gonna copy that, but then I wanna paste it at my top level there, there we go. Now, if I open up that one, you should see that it's, it's going to be trying to compile the test int and the test string templates. Um, and now hopefully that'll make me happier. So now it's showing my file is modified. My make file is modified, which is that 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 surprised me before. It wasn't, it wasn't, it shouldn't have been you um, as untracked because I had copied it to the wrong place. So the source directory. So um, so yeah, if we look at our modifications, we should see that the only difference is um, that that we're now compiling the two test template files instead of the original test list SDPP file. So. All right, so again, back, back to this. So um, if, if you do everything right on this step, it should build. I'll clean, if you copy all that right, it should clean and build. Um, Oops, uh, you have to be careful. I, I, I started running my test too soon. Um, I, I think some people do that when you get into problems with you. So you have to make certain that everything is done compiling before you try and run your tests. So that you see, you see the, that message there. Uh, and there we go. So, so um, um, and it should um, pass. In this case though, uh, it's not gonna really be running very many, many tests. Um, because I've got most stuff commented out um, at this point. So yeah, if you look at the, the test string template, the, the only thing it does, um, um, oh yeah, for this one, um, um, I do have the second test case commented, um, uncommented, but I commented out a lot of stuff. So you're actually gonna have to uncomment this stuff once you um, implement um, the, the things that I had kind of removed. So, um, so yeah, I'd kind of removed everything, including like the get size. So, so you have to actually ba add back in, you have to templatize like the get size. So, so the first thing that you want to do, sorry, um, is um, kind of just uncomment this first test. Uh, copy your implementation of the get size function that you had um, in, in your last version, um, and um, um, 
templatize your Git size. Okay. Um, I'll get you started on that real quickly here, and that might be the last thing that I'll do. There, there's um, uh, you might want to you might want to make a copy before um, before you did the checkout to go back in time before you you know before you added your code. You might want to make a copy somewhere of your files. I mean, if you didn't do that, you can always you know use your repository. Um, um, like you could always go um, find your most recent commit, and I'm going to do that right now. Like, look at my source. Is that, or, or let me look at the include. That's not HPP. So that'll that'll have the the version, my non templatized version of, for example, the um, um, uh, the get size member function, and, and all these. I'll just copy one. I could just copy and paste them from here, for example. So you get back. So here, here I'll get my get size, uh, put it back here. All right. Um, and um, we need the um, the actual implementation. So let me open up my implementation file. Oh, why my outline's not coming up? Oh, because I don't want a test list. I want um, my actual implementation file. This doesn't give me. There we go. Um, so let's put the get size back after the destructor. I like to, I, I think I told people this before, you should, should try and keep these in the same order. So the order that you have them in your header file is the order they should normally appear um, in your implementation file. So here, here's the destructor. Um, so I'll go back and get my get size here. All right, so I mostly got it in, um, and I already uncommented out just that first line for the the, the gets out not test list. Um, that first line, or I'll go ahead and uncomment that. Right. So this one compile because uh, well, uh, this won't compile here because we haven't templatized the get size function yet. Right. So normally, um, I mean. You might have to do something uh, on the the header, right? Because anytime I'm passing in an integer, I already said that. So, so anytime you were passing in an integer, like to the append and prepend, that needs to become um, a generic type T for your template version. But in this case, um, you know, so but but not every integer. So this is another kind of caveat, right? Not every integer is a T because get size is returning the size of the list. It's not returning an item in the list like um, the indexing operator does, it's returning just the size. And that, that the, the size is an integer, right? It's just returning this, right? So that should remain an integer, right? So, so you, I mean, you, get, you, know, you can't just blindly change every, you can't just do a, a search and replace. You have to know, so is this a, an actual integer type or is this a, an item in my list that now, now needs to be a generic type T, right? Um, so for some of these functions, you don't, you don't have to do anything in the header. You just have to templatize the implementation. Um, so you have to say that uh, you have to put this um, template boilerplate before the member function. Um, and you have to say it's of the list type T namespace now, my get size function. Right? Um, And uh, and the and again the IntelliSense is just hasn't updated yet, but uh, I think that should be right. So let's let's try it again. Let's try compiling it. Um, I'm gonna clean that. So 
So, um, okay, so yeah, it's, it's, um, um, it is right. So um, I was complaining that uh, we don't have to get size. reopen that just make certain that I do have it yeah Well, not very thing. I see what my changes are so far to list.cpp is just the addition of that. And my changes to list.hpp so far. All right. And let me try to buy one more time. Nope. Let's check here. So we're compiling the uh, the, the test int, compile recompiling the test string, and we're compiling the list .o. Um, hmm, did I make a mistake on the initial code here? So this is a little bit kludgy, but there should be, yeah, it's down there. Um, there should be things at the bottom in order to make the compiler happy that um, tells it that we're going to be using uh, lists of ints and lists of strings. It seems to be in there. Get size though. Um, Oh, let's see here. So let's um, step back. Let's keep doing that. So let's step back to the test int template. I'll let that back out again. Uh, still, uh, still thinks there's something that's referencing the get size. Oh, um, well, okay. I guess I'll. Um,
Now, somehow, yeah, so I, I, I don't, I didn't see what I did there. Somehow I did not have it actually in my file here. Okay, let me try that again. So, um, so we've, we've got the, um, the, the method um, in the header file. So let me, let me put that back into my list.cpp implementation file. Um, and I'll templatize it. There we go. So that looks better. And, 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 and I, I obviously I did something bad. When I go back and look over this video, I'm probably going to kick myself. Um, but um, all right, so that looks better. So at least the IntelliSense now seems to be agreeing that, that I can see it now. So let's try, well, um, although um, I still have that uncommented out, but let's, uh, let's see if we build again. Let's do a clean build again. But yeah, I mean, this is the way I always develop stuff, you know, so as soon as I notice something's not building, I start taking stuff back out again uh, and re-adding it in one by one. Okay, so we build and run, and, but we're building now where we've got that function in there. So that should allow me to uncomment this and build and invoke the get size, but on my templatized list of integer class. There we go. I look better. So and and yeah, that passed. Um, um, and you know, so um, I think when I described this, I encouraged you to, I can't remember, I mean, you, you could probably just try it all on the, the list of integers first, one by one. Uh, but either way, so at this point, you know, so then now, now we've got this templatize. So it should work on like a list, my, my, my get size should work on a list of strings as well. So, so I could open up my test string and do the same thing. Um, so, oh, I already had that uncommented. Um, um, on, on the list of strings. So, so it should be passing. Um, yeah, it is only passing the two assertions on, on each test case, right? And, and one, one assertion on, on each place. So, so, so it's, it's now able to get the size when I have a list of strings and to get the size when I have a list of integers, right? Um, let's do one more of those since I kind of messed that up um, um, again. Um, let, let's do the next one. So, like the next one is. Um, to get allocation size, right? So I can uncomment to get allocation size, um, get my, um, I'm gonna get the, uh, the method, the get allocation size method first, the implementation first, since I've already got that open over there. So I put the get allocation size under the get size, right? Um, but then we need to go back and get um, the um, declaration of the get allocation size from the header file. So <clears throat> that. Um, and now that I've got that over there. So, so again, this one, um, this is a returning an int, but, but that is, should be an integer. It's not an item in the list. Um, it is just a, um, uh, the, the, the current allocation size. So the only things I really need to do um, is put in the template boilerplate and change it so that we're in the list of type T um, namespace, right? And that should allow me to, I'll just go ahead and um, I'll do these one by one. So we'll check that we can get allocation size for a list of integers. All right, so now we're passing three assertions. 
Um, and we should be able to do them for a list of strings as well. All right. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm, I think, yeah, I'm getting kind of close to wrapping up. I might do one more. I don't know if there's one more. Uh, there is one more. Well, let me think. So, um, yeah, the, the, maybe I could show you one more, like, like the string method. Give that to you here to get you going. Um, But, but yeah, if you have any questions, start, uh, um, you can ask them now too. So um, we ought to be able to call, you know, the string method on list events or list of strings or lists of whatever container type. Um, but our string method, um, so again, um, it does. It does need to return a string. So you know, um, there's nothing that needs to uh, really change um, on the declaration of the the function signature here, right? So um, uh, yeah. So so yeah. You, you have to get the, the complete class working again, including the things you implement for task one, two, and three um, for, for task four. So so your final thing of task four is going to be the whole list working with all of the Overloaded operators given originally, and the overloaded member function or the, the member functions given, plus the, the member functions and operators that you added in the task one, two, and three, but but templatized to work um, for any kind of container type. Um, um, so the string, when you do the string method um, or the two string method. Um, it does have, so going to be a little bit different than the other two because string look at it. Um, well, I mean, yeah, you, know, you for all of these. Got to get the template boilerplate and make certain it's a, a member of the of the right namespace. So the namespace has changed the list lists of keys, or however you want to think of that list contain type keys, generic type keys there. Um, but um, um, no, I'm wrong. So I'm thinking of the wrong thing. So yeah, that's all you're gonna have to do for this one too. <laughs> so I gave you another one. Um, so for the most part, everything else just comes out because values. Well, um, oh, this this method. Um, so notice the, the reason why I was thinking this is is because you we're accessing the values array. But you've already, um, you know, you were already given that values is a generic type T um, in the starting stuff that you gave over, right? So uh, again, as long as whatever the type T is knows how to be sent into an output stream, like we're doing here. This code will compile correctly. You know, so strings will compile fine because strings know how to be sent to an output stream, and ints will compile fine because they know how to be put to an output stream, um, and so on. Right. So yeah, that's fine. Um, Let me think. What else? Um, so the the point I was trying to make, but I, I I think I'm not going to show any more of these. But the point I was trying to make is that not all of these 
uh, will it be that you just make those changes to the um, you know the, the 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 signature of the function by adding the template boilerplate? So some of these you will have to actually change some of the code inside of them as well. So the big thing being you have to identify um, things that were integers but that are now of the generic type T and do the right things for the generic type T. So, um, So I know for the, the operator, so I, may, I probably should have done this one, but, but the, the, the obvious one for this one is that operator, the, the indexing operator is no longer returning an integer for the template class. We hold a, a container of type T, so it needs to return a reference with T instead of a reference to an integer, okay? The, the index is still an integer because in all, all things are indexed by an integer value, right? So, but um, the but you're returning an item from your list, you're returning a T, right? Likewise though, for like your append and prepend, you were passing in, when, when you wrote those, you were passing in an integer parameter, um, but, um, um, now you need to be passing in a, a, a value of type T for those, right? Okay, um, that was a lot longer than I really wanted to go. So I kind of do want to um, go ahead and wrap up there. Uh, questions. Um, okay, so I'm going to try and get that video up here for anybody that um, needs it or, or unable to watch here. But um, yeah, that's it. So as usual, you know, uh, use the comments from um, the repository um, or send me emails. Uh, either way is fine. So, um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to end this session and I will see you guys later then.